at least once a year, I like to bring in some of my Kevin's Famous Chili. The trick is to undercook the onions. Everybody is going to get to know each other in the pot. Now, I'm serious about this stuff. I'm up the night before, pressing garlic and dicing whole tomatoes. I toast my own ancho chilies. It's a recipe passed down from Malone's for generations. It's probably the thing I do best. Hello, I'm Andrew Shevsik Moonves. Welcome to Big Brother Cheesecake for Office Wars. It's day 50 inside the Big Brother Cheesecake house, and this week, Lindsay is the head of household. She nominated Ryan and Curtis for eviction, and Lindsay won the Golden Power Beat to herself and chose not to use it, which means tomorrow, either Ryan or Curtis will be evicted and become the first member of the jury. Who will it be? You'll find out tomorrow. And what will their please be? We'll find out shortly. But first... Uh, I have a special guest here to join me. Please welcome uh, former uh, manager of the Dunder Mifflin Scranton branch, Michael Scott. Hello, everyone. Uh, really happy to be here. Uh, I just wanted to let you know that my wife, Holly Flax, and I, uh, we were moving. We moved away from uh, Boulder, Colorado, because too many boulders uh, kept tripping on them. Anyway. And uh, we moved to Mesa, Arizona, because you can't trip over those. And Mesa is very topographical. And when and the warm, dry climate is really good for Holly's vagina. But she told me not to say that. Um, but while we were moving, I noticed a photo album of everybody from the office when they were babies. So I think we should uh, flip through the photo album, shall we? So here we go. This is Meredith, before the alcoholism and uh, numb nuts of an ex-husband got in the way of her life. This is Angela Martin, before she could learn to talk back and call everything bullshit. Look at Jim Halpert. Oh, the hairstyle hasn't changed much. But you know, if I was on Love It or Listed and I saw that carpet with those tiles, I would list it. Look out, Dilf Alert! I mean, cute child! That's our very own Pam Beasley, who would go on to get engaged and marry Jim Halpert. And I just realized I created a showmance between Curtis and Brazil. Whoops! Ooh, look at that fat tub of lard. We should abort that. <laughs> That's Kevin before he lost all the hair and dignity. Oh, if it isn't Kelly Kapoor, or as I like to call her, Chatty Kathy. That's Phyllis, who knit the, that glove all by herself before she slept with uh, Bob Vance Vance Refrigeration and had two kids. Oh, Toby. What, you know, why? I, now I know why I don't look at this anymore. Oh, Toby. That's when he was signing his divorce papers. Oh, more of Toby. You know, I could floss those teeth with curly fries. Oh, look at that. Ryan Howard, office hottie, cutie pie then, cutie pie now. Ryan Howard's mom needs to learn which way is up. And fun fact, I sold, my mother sold that couch to Ryan's mother sometime in the mid-80s. Uh, probably bought from Sears, because that's where everybody got their furniture then. This is so cute. This was taken at the fair. Uh, this is the fair in which I met Holly. It was Toby's goodbye party. Phyllis planned this party. It was fantastic. And we had a carousel and a Ferris wheel, and it was all great. And, you know, this is just proof, and I say this all the time, that... The office really is a family. When I took Holly out to Cooper's uh, seafood joint and I had the lobster feast for two and she had the chef salad with a side dressing on the side and a water and I had the house wine because house wine's good, I explained to her that we are a family. You know, we are a family. And it's okay if you sleep with the vendor to get discounts on supplies and Outback Steakhouse coupons. It's okay because we are a family. So thanks, everyone. Uh, I really miss the office. I miss everyone at uh, Dunder Mifflin. Uh, except Toby, of course, and I uh, hope to see you all soon. Take care. Bye. Okay, thank you very much, Michael Scott. Uh, now it's time to get to the pleas, uh, the final pleas. So Ryan Curtis, your house guest tomorrow, actually your house guests um, 
Well, they already cast their vote to evict one of you, but for the sake of the audience, I do, I'm do. i going to give you one brief moment uh, to, to make one brief statement. They made it yesterday uh, as to why you should stay in the game. And Curtis, we will start with you. Hello there, dear house guests. I really enjoyed my time in this game, and I really hope it can continue. All the respect for Ryan. Been a pleasure playing the game with him. Bit a sweet week, but it is what it is. Ultimately, I don't want to leave Marson all alone in the warehouse. It gets cold down there, and he can't really play basketball by himself. Please vote to evict Ryan, because Cat and Brazil will be fine without him. But think about Marson. He will be all alone, and that's just not cool. Okay, thank you, Curtis. Rai Rai, you're up next. Hey everyone, as you settle in to vote today, I have to ask you one question. Are waffle fries better than regular fries? Once you have that answer in your heart, go and cast your vote. Thank you for your time and attention. Obviously, I want to stay and keep going on this journey with you all. I hope you feel the same way about me. Thank you, Ryan. The correct answer was curly fries are the best type of fries. Uh, so, house guests, um, obviously you've already cast your votes to Vic, so no point in telling you about uh, the standard voting rules, which none of you, so far this season, nobody has made that mistake, which is great. Okay, um, there was a piece of information. Oh, the jury house. Real quick, because I don't want to fall behind. Um, the jury house starts on Wednesday. Whoever is evicted, Curtis or Ryan, will become the first juror. Last season, the first two seasons, because the jurors hated the house guests remaining so much and wanted them all to burn and die, they never contacted the house guests. And if, if a house guest ever contacted them, like I think, I can't remember who it was. I think Dan sent Joanne a message in season two, and literally she responded within seconds of, fuck you! <laughs> so funny. Dan showed me the message. It was hilarious. But anyway. Uh, but in season three, uh, because Chantel still had quite a few of her allies, and JoJo too, in the jury, uh, one many of them, but Caitlin in particular, was messaging JoJo quite a bit, and it became sort of muddled. So, house guests, I will put a little bit of the fear of God in you, even though really I, I can't, I can only police so much, but this season, I would like the game to be kept as pure as possible, and because of that, no jurors are allowed to speak to the house guests about game. I get that this is real life, so if somebody says, if, let's say, Cat is in the house, and... Oh, shoot. Uh, well, let's say Lynn was in jury, and Kat wants to ask Lynn, Hey, Lynn, how was your birthday party? <laughs> That's okay. But absolutely, you know, like pleasantries. But absolutely no game talk. So, if I have reason to believe, or I have proof, or strong enough reason that a juror has been talking to a house guest, and they made the first contact, I will kick them off the jury and replace them with somebody you do not want on the jury. If a house guest uh, is caught talking to a juror about game, they will get a Pooh Brown Power Veto. And trust me, you, Jonathan will tell you, you do not want a Pooh Brown Power Veto. So it's very clear. Once a house guest is evicted and becomes a juror, you are not to talk game with them at all and vice versa. This way, the jury house is kept separate from the, the main chat and from the main house guests. And when it comes down to the final two... Uh, the jurors are basing their votes based on what they know of the game and obviously the limited information they get from the episodes, not from uh, the house guests. And also, it's also it's more so the other way around. I don't want the house guests. It's not, I don't really care how much the jurors know um, because they're obviously going to be seeing the episodes. So that's... Eh. It's more the other way around. I don't want the house guests to know what the jury is thinking so when Caitlin was telling Jojo that this is what Nicole is saying, this is what Krista was saying, it may have influenced Jojo's decisions. And also, there was a week or so where Krista and Nicole stopped talking in the jury chat, and when I asked them what's going on, everything was fine. They are like, well, what's the point of talking when Caitlin is just going to tell Jojo everything? So, and I get that. So I don't really want the house guests to know what the jury is thinking, because I want them to make a decision on who they're going to take to final four, three, two, based on what they think, not what they know. Okay. I knew I would take too long to explain that, but anyway, now it's time to get to the rules for the head of household competition. Free from the threat of eviction, the head of household wins the perks of his or her private HOH bedroom bathroom, uh, a fruit basket, 
with citrus and Arby's will deliver uh, two beef and cheddars for eight dollars because that's the special. Uh, a letter from home and the responsibility of nominating two of his or her fellow house kids for eviction. This week's head of household competition is called Big Brother Clockwork. And here's how it works. This is the second of two endurance competitions. Uh, it is a classic competition played every year. It was won by Debbie in Season 1 after 23 hours, Rob in Season 2 after 16 hours, and Alvin in Season 3 uh, at a record 25 hours. And fun fact, because I went to look back, this is our second endurance competition. In the first three seasons, the endurance winners were Angela and Debbie in Season 1, Rob and uh, Rhonda in Season 2, and... Jojo and Alvin in season three. So an endurance winner has uh, the endurance winners have never won the season, which is interesting. So that's another curse. I'm coming up with a lot of them. So Curtis, you won the endurance two weeks ago, so you're screwed. May as well pack your bags now. Um, but yeah, so Big Brother Clockwork is very simple. Every hour on the hour, you must type in the word clockwork into the group chat. All caps, spelled correctly, C-L-O-C-K-W-O-R-K, -O -O clockwork. If you spell it wrong or it's not in all caps, you're eliminated. If you, and you have to type it at, so the first one will be at 11 a.m. Eastern Standard Time, you have to type it at 11 a.m. And we are going based on Facebook's clock. So if Facebook says 9.59 or 10, uh, excuse me, 10.59 or 11.01, you are eliminated. So you have to make sure it's at 11 o'clock. It doesn't have to be first, as long as you do it at 11 o'clock. Now, after last season, when Julian created some cyber robot to automatically type clockwork, in which I, which I fooled you on, bitch, um, I had to make a slight change. At random times, I may, a minute before, pop in and change the instructions on clockwork. So I'll change what you have to type in. Uh, and that's to fool robots like Julian. In addition, we may at some point move to 30 minute intervals or 15 minute intervals or even less. That's that's honestly based on my discretion as to how long this competition is going to go on for. Uh, but yeah, so it'll be a good one. I'm curious if Alvin's 25 hour limit will be broken. My hunch is no, but anyway. Okay, with that said, who will be evicted from the Big Brother Cheesecake 4 house? Ryan or Curtis. Find out tomorrow and find out who will become the next head of household in the Big Brother Endurance Head of Household Competition. I'm Andrew Shows of Moonbest. Take care and leave you as we eavesdrop on the house guests. Good night.